Welcome, Computer Science 116 Buggy Image. Our goals for the lesson. Examine a program with poorly written code and determine what it's supposed to do. Use meaningful variable names to indicate their value and use. Apply methods you've already learned to improve your buggy code and correct the errors. So, hey, programming's not all about just making your own code. Sometimes it's about fixing other people's code and, like, finding bugs in it and how to be a better programmer. This is, this is a key thing to learn here. And hopefully, if you're interested in ever doing more of this or making more advanced code, making more than just simple programming projects for this class, you're going to need to really consider this kind of stuff. So, let's go on. Bugs, literally? Dudes, so the first bug, and this is crazy to me, back in the 47, you had these big old rooms of computers, right? And like computers, not, not just your laptop, just rooms. The first bug was documented in this engineering notebook. You know what engineering notebooks are. You're in Project Lead the Way. Like, people actually do these logs. Yeah. And their first bug was this moth. And, I don't know, a bunch of edgelords kept the moth and taped it on here. Probably thought it was funny. I mean, that's something, so I'm kind of proud of them. Even back in 1947, people had enough fun with this and actually taped the moth here. It's kind of gross. But hey, so that's where the idea of bugs comes from. An actual bug was the first bug. It's just a glitch in the program. It's something that causes some problems right here. Right? So what causes bugs? Sometimes it's because there's a problem in the code. And so, so, so maybe you make a mistake. You type something wrong and it causes a problem in the code. It doesn't work. Sometimes it's like you, it's some sloppiness or people are didn't test their code out or they kind of didn't write it in the right way. So or and sometimes sometimes you have projects where multiple people are working on code and you you know you're trying to work with each other but everyone's doing it their own way and no one's kind of documenting what's going on or you kind of and you just forget or maybe you worked on it for so long that you forget things like you ever had a big project at school and like you kind of you're writing an essay and you forget what you're writing out at the beginning and then towards the end it starts you start writing something else that doesn't make sense when you read it at the end. I mean, that happens. So there's things that we could do to reduce the amount of bugs we have here, and there's things that we can do to debug our code, to, to try to identify these problems. And so some ideas that have come up here, we talked about how naming conventions of variables. You name it the right way, it helps readers look at the code and understand. Comments will be a big thing in here. And just actually do the right code. All right, so this is huge. Now, I'll tell a story. You might do, pro okay, if you do programming for a living, you often begin your career in the quality assurance area. Sometimes, like early on, you're not the lead programmer of a big project unless you're doing it on your own. You're going to work for a big company. You might start off in quality assurance, QA. You might be a tester. So you're going to be testing for problems. And then, or you're gonna, and then you're going to fix bug. You're going to have to do bug reports, fill them in. I had to do this for a job. Off topic right here. If you want to forward, go ahead. I was a video game tester back in the day for THQ, the game Dawn of War. My name is on there. should be in the credits somewhere. I did that for months. And, oh, you ever can be one of these video game testers? Do it. It's fun. You get a, you get a sit there at a computer. And you're kind of playing the game, but like it's fun as long as you get a good game. At THQ, they had games like Disney Princesses, and you're playing on a Game Boy Advance. And that would have been tough. But I got lucky because I knew how to use a computer. So I got to play a computer game. Fun stuff. A lot of bugs. A lot of stuff behind the scenes every day. Find more bugs. Just kind of play around with this area of the code. See what you can break. And then you got to fill the report out. Sometimes they'd give me a, they'd give us the big reports of, hey, these are the bugs that we fixed. Verify that they fixed it. So that's what you do in QA. So now I have to go back and make sure it works. So I, as a tester, I didn't do like the programming part, but I was the one kind of helping 
probably sending the reports to these QA programmers to go fix. There were other parts that couldn't be fixed there, like the men's bathroom around lunchtime. It was awful. It's a sea of yellow. Anyways, understand your code. So in order to fix the bugs, you really need to understand your code, right? If you don't know what's going on, you're not going to understand what's going on. A good way to learn what a program does is figure out what each variable does, right? So variables are something that have names, and you hold data in there. You store a number or maybe a string of sentence or a string of characters. Uh, sometimes bugs are related just to the names of the variables don't tell you what's going on. Uh, since programs are executed sequentially, that means in order from like the top to down, starting at the top down. From the start, first statement to the last, you can predict variable values. All right. Examine how the variables are initialized. When I say initialized, like used for the first time, where they set the first value. So in Python, how initialization works is different in different programming languages. Python is very simple that you, you just use it. And you set it to some value, x equals 8, and that's initialized. And then it's, it's set as a number. So you initialize it, and maybe you change the variable throughout the program, or it's updated through something. To do this, you can hand trace the program, record the values of variables in your hand. OK, so hand tracing a program with a trace table allows you to follow the program step by step and record the values for each variable. Create a ta trace table for the following program. OK, so. One we can debug is keep track. We have this code right here, x and y. And what are the variables, what's the value of the variable at each step? So at step one, I can, okay, I can run this code. What does it do? I don't know. I don't really care what it does. Actually, it probably does nothing. So first step, step line, it said x is equal to 8. And y is undefined because it hasn't been used yet. The next one sets y equal to 40 divided by x. So x is still 8, but y is going to be 40 divided by 8, which is 5. And then the next step, x is going to be 10, because I set x to equal to 10. I overwrite that 8, and y will still be 5. So one way you do check your, your bugs is by watching what's going on with the variables. Other, you know, if, a lot of times you have your software development environments have some of this built in to help you out. So, oh, good, there's the answers. Many new programmers might have thought that the value of y was 4 because the last value of x was 10. And, okay, well, okay, who would have thought that? It starts at the top down. I guess if you go bottom up and you aren't paying attention, it's top down. Okay, I've never seen a programming language go from bottom up. Maybe, okay, maybe for brand new. But it's always top down. I've never seen that. So I guess if you aren't paying attention, maybe if this x equals 8 was like way earlier in the program, and then you saw this afterwards, okay. But three lines, come on. Come on. No, one, no one's thinking that. If you are, and I just insulted you, I'm sorry. Maybe... Who reads? Did you ever have you ever read a textbook that goes bottom up? Uh, is there a language? Is there a human race language? I know there's languages that read right to left instead of left to right. Is there a language that reads bottom to top? Maybe there is. I don't know. If there is, type it in comments because I'm really curious. Oh, this lesson, nine, nine minutes in, haven't done anything. Use a print statement at line four to show the value of y. Does the value match the predicted value of the trace table? Okay, so I can go to this code and go uh, print. How did print work? Just y, right? That's how it works. And you run it, and it prints five. 5.0. 5 oh, interesting. Uh, it did print 5.0 and not just 5. Why did it do 5.0? That's actually kind of weird to me. It should do just 5. 5.0 is a decimal. 
Okay, well, let's keep going. Actually, that does bug me. Uh, these should be integers. Because they don't need to be. They can do things on their own. You don't need to hang in here and watch me. You can do it on your own. I was answering a question in Zoom chat. I have, I'm, I have no problem with that. I'm recording live. Yeah. But some people like watching me do this right here. Use a print statement to at line four to value of y. Okay. Of course. I use new values for x and y. Create a trace table to predict the value. Okay. So let's say if I had this. x equals four, we'd be four. y is, x would still be this four. And 48 divided by four should be 12. Then this would be eight. And this would still be 12. Okay. Make the above changes in your code editor and serve the value of y. Was my prediction correct? Okay, I mean, 4, 8, 48. Yeah, it's 12. What's 12.0? 12 okay. Explore a poorly written program. To get started in your debugging session, start by exploring some code that is intentionally poorly written. Okay, so it says copy this in VS Code. I'm not going to do this, but I might open this in um, Trinket. Just make it a little bit bigger to see. Okay. So we got import turtle and got X and got this while loop. Okay, there's a bunch of stuff going on. Do your best to explore the above code. If you cannot easily understand it, don't worry. The poorly written chosen variable names and lack of comments give you no clues. Yeah, one of the problems is I use a bunch of var with variable names. Like, what does X mean? Sometimes X is like a coordinates, like X, Y coordinates. What about W, Y, Z? I, I don't know what W. Sometimes if I see a W, maybe it's width for something. But Z is like if it's a third axis... And n's, maybe n is like the counting variable. I, I'm used to that in calculus. But the problem is all these variable names don't really tell you what they represent. That would be nicer. Code is difficult to understand and interpret. Yeah. And that's one of the problems you're, which can create buggy code if the variables are named weird things. Run the program to see that it gives you any clues. Most likely it's still unclear what the image is supposed to be. If you were in software development organization, you can go to the original writers and ask. Okay. Assume the answer is, it's supposed to be a spider. So what happens? It's supposed to be a spider. Like, I would look at this and i go, what is this? It's supposed to be a spider. Okay. I mean, the question you could ask is, oh, it's supposed to be a spider. Why are none of the variables... Why is there no indication it's supposed to be a spider on here? What are some problems I'd see in the image? Yeah, like I don't. So if it's a spider, spiders have six legs or eight legs? I don't remember. Yeah, they have eight legs. Do some have six legs? I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, why, why don't you have like the eyes and stuff and like the smiley face because spiders are always happy. So I don't believe this. Oh, good. Six legs instead of eight. That's right. The placement of legs is skewed out of place compared to the spider's body. Yeah. Why is that not centered right? It probably should be centered. I don't know. Sure. Maybe. I, spiders I thought were pretty balanced. So let's investigate with block strings. One approach to help you understand a program is to break into smaller chunks. To help you see what each chunk does, you can temporarily deactivate. Am I going to fix that code? I hope I do it later. You can temporarily deactivate certain parts of the code and execute other parts. In Python, you can do this with block strings. Oh, triple, oh, triple quotes. Oh. Okay, what they're saying, you know how you can use hashtags to comment out code? Instead of that, you can just use triple quotes around a bunch of lines to comment them out. So if I put these triple quotes in, it'll turn red. And it's just like putting hashtags in front of each of these lines. So, like, if I would have hashtagged, you see how these go like that and go green? 
That means they're commented out. We learned that before. You skip them, right? Or you can always do hashtag this is a comment, right? But another way if you want to like comment out a bunch of lines is just do triple quotes around whatever you want to quote. So it'll do, and it doesn't, I know, okay, that's really weird to do it that way. But then I can do these triple quotes right now, and all this will be commented out. So if you have like a big chunk you want to comment out, you don't want to put hashtags in front of everything, just use the triple quotes. All right? So that's an option. I don't understand why they call it block strings. Deactivate. This is just comment out the code. So I, I've never heard anyone use those words. They say comment. I've heard comment out. I don't know. This this seems weird to me. But probably P PLTW doesn't want to confuse comments for your code with commenting out code. Because we can use... Use it for the same purposes. Hold on. <laughs> Had a cough. Corona. In the code below, which variables A, B, C, D will be created and assigned values? So B, C are commented out. So just A and D. I'm so good at this. <laughs> Stuck. Temporary con... So it's good to, like, you do this. Maybe you want to do it temporarily. Oh, hover block strings should not become a permanent part of your code. Really? What if you just want to have, okay, if you want to have multiple lines of comments? Okay, uh, you know what? Comment however you want. Maybe, but maybe follow these rules. I, I guess whatever the convention is. Look at your program in VS Code or Trinket. The variable w seems to begin a new section of code. To see what the section before it does, deactivate a major part of your program with a block string. Begin with a block string before the w equals six line. And it, okay. So before this line, we're gonna do 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 do. And then end it right before the wind turtle screen. So do do do. So we're gonna chomp chop out that and then we run it I guess okay so that this is okay so it's kind of a good way to like it just made the body of the spider it doesn't make the legs so this part probably makes the legs I'm guessing okay save and run the program what does the first section of code do what's a better name for variable x I'd say this first section of code because like this is just the loop for the screen so this, what does this section do? This makes the, this makes the spider body. Okay. So what's a very better variable name for X? So like, if all of that does the spider body, maybe I go, maybe a better variable name would be spider. Body, I, I, I guess, or you could just call it just spider, I guess. Or you know what? I don't like doing the underscore thing. I like doing spider body. I mean, you probably just say spider, but that might not be enough because the whole thing. So I'm gonna make the spider body. Okay. I don't, you know, you might do something else. That's fine. Python is other languages or strong conventions or guidelines for naming variables and other constructs. If everyone follows good naming conventions, it's easier for everyone to do stuff. For variable names, adhere to the following conventions. Okay, so this is important here. Start variable names with lowercase letter. I, I, everyone should do that. The convention is to start variables with lowercase letters. Sometimes uppercase means, if you type in something uppercase, it means something else. Okay, convention number two, use underscores to separate words. I don't like doing that. Personally, I like just the first letter's lowercase, and then every word is uppercase, but I don't have underscores. But if you wanted to do that, go ahead. 
So you can go spider underscore body. I don't care. I'm not even going to add that to my dictionary. No way. Can't I just ignore that? But if you want to do that, you want to do it my whatever you like better. If necessary, use digits as in turtle one, turtle two. However, descriptive words are often better. Yeah. So you might have named things, oh, spider one. And then the next part of the spider, you can call it spider two or something. But so numbers can work sometimes, but it's usually better to use some kind of descriptors like small turtle, turtle left, or fast turtle, turtle right, instead of numbers. But sometimes the numbers are fine enough. Like if it's multiple turtles, that's fine. But yeah, uh, so I don't believe this. I'd say this is okay. So I'm gonna highlight this. Do not use uppercase letters. Okay. Well, I like uh, don't start with an uppercase, but if you want to use uppercase later in there, I think you can. I don't think you have to follow that rule. Do not use built-in Python keywords. Yep, don't do this. I don't think I don't even know if it lets you. What is a built-in Python keyword? Like the word print. Don't make print equals x. That's actually not even going to work. See how print turns purple? So there's certain keywords like print or you can't make a variable called true equals zero. No. But you can do lowercase true like that. So certain things are keywords in Python. They give you, here's a list of things. So yeah, avoid all these. Uh, typically, it will even like del for delete. They'll turn into a different color. They won't be black. That means there's some kind of keyword. Like, but it's it's those are case sensitive. Like capital true represents true, like true or false. But lowercase true like this is just a variable T R U E. I invented. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, and you could do if you did true like this with two capitals. That's just a variable. Yeah, so, yeah, be careful. Case sensitive. Do not use lowercase l and uppercase o by themselves. They're easy to confuse with one and zero. Yeah. Okay. That's probably good. Yeah, if you're trying to do that, if you did um, turtle or you did tur turtle, I mean, yeah. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> if you're trying to debug code, you won't catch that. Or, like, even using zeros, like you go spider o zero or spider o. I guess they do the slashes in the zeros, so it's not as bad, but yeah. Well, it depends on what the font is. Oh, are we done with class? Oh, yeah, it's lunchtime pause this video. Continuing on. In the code, change the variable name x to a name that represents its purpose. Okay. Uh, they said change it to spider. I said spider body. Whatever you want to do. I don't care. So a good name would this be spider. Maybe spider's just better. I said spider body. I'm keeping it. Test your modifications by running the program. So we want to test that if now that I change the variable, it still works. Still draws the body, right? Yep. While learning what the program does, you may discover some bugs. You may want to change how the program works. For now, resist the temptation to change the functionality. Yeah, don't get ahead on this. All right. As you continue to learn this program, you'll discover wait many ways to improve it. All right. So let's check the rest of the variables out. Renaming variables to indicate their purpose is a great way to learn how to program. A program has poorly named variables. Move your block strings. So they call it recap because I'm doing this in two parts. They call these block strings. It's just a comments. Let's just comment out code. I don't know why they call them block screens. Whoever just showed up, type in chat so you get attendance. So I'm removing the block screens for where the variable w is used. Determine the w's purpose. Okay, so what is w's purpose? Well, oh, 
So one problem we had with this spider. Wait, what happened? Oh, this X. I have to change all the X's. Oh, because... Oh. My bad. Okay. So, this is supposed to create a spider. And one thing you might notice... How many legs is a spider supposed to have? No problem. Oh, man. Um, a spider's supposed to have eight legs. So whoever drew this spider? Really? So looking at this code, what do you think W does? If it's six, okay, it's probably how many legs we draw. And judging from that, this, and it's six, and there's six legs. I'm guessing it's the number of legs. Rename the variable B, W. So let's not call it this. I'm going to call it, we can just call it legs. You can call it spider legs if you want to. Just call it legs. So every W is now legs. Test your improvement by running the program. Make sure it still runs. Good. That makes more sense to me. Still another way to learn what the code does is experiment with different values for variables. Even if you cause errors choosing values that are too large or small. Yeah, so sometimes you might just change the numbers. You're like, I don't know what this does. Let's mess with it. Duplicate the line of code that initiates the Y variable. So initiate means starts it. And comment it out using a block of string. So this one, when it says duplicate, here's what it wants you to do. Make a copy, because we're basically just trying to save it. And then we're going to comment out this for now. So we want to save it. This will allow you to experiment with the values for the variable while keeping the original code intact. Then change the Y value, learning how it's used. So I don't know why 70. That doesn't make sense. So I'm just kind of saving this Y for now. And that's why I'm saying. You know, here's another way to save that 70. Could have just done this. I'm not even, you know what? I'm breaking the rules. I would have done this. You can do like a comment 70 right here. Now I can mess with this number. I'm breaking the rules. What does 50 do? What? Okay. What does like 25 do? weird. Okay, let's go bigger. 150. Okay, what if we go 200? So my theory is, and judging by changing all this, is it changes the length of the legs. As it gets bigger, the legs got bigger. As it got smaller, legs got smaller. Huh. Well, there I go. Okay. I would say that's fair, and now that's going to be even smaller. Yep. I think that's the leg length right there. And I can look at that. Where's Y used in the code? Y is used right here where it goes forward Y. So that's like drawing the line forward. Okay, so the bigger that is, the more line it draws. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, there's the hint. Rename the Y variable based on the, the purpose and the test the program. Okay, so let's rename the... So it's like the length of the legs. So I'm going to go... I could just name it length. So one option is just call it length. I'd say I don't like that because the length of what? The length of the body of the spider, the length of the whole spider. So I would even, you're not wrong doing that, but I would go leg length. Oh, underscore, I said I don't like doing those. So I'm going to do it my way, leg length. Sure. 
and then let's restore the 70. And so if this is leg rank, I'm going to copy this and replace the Ys. You want to name it something else? Go for it. I don't care. Some people might go like leg, if you want to shorthand it, leg L. Remember they said the L's kind of look like one sometimes? Leg length or like that. Len is kind of an abbreviation for length. That seems pretty common. Yeah, you, know, you can do that. Okay, so it works. Insert the statement print Z equals Z after Z. Oh my gosh, okay. After Z is initiated, given the first value, then add the statement inside the while loop. Okay, so one at a time. After Z is initiated, so where is Z initiated? Right here. It's the first time it's used. So boom. And then this statement, I'm going to copy paste right here. I hate how it does highlight like that. Then add the statement print inside the while loop to see how Z is used there. Using the output from the print statements, determine what the variable Z is for. Okay. So, oh, and then it says, where did I do the second one? Inside the while loop somewhere. Okay, so I'll just do it like right after Z is used. So sometimes you got to see what the variables, like what is the, I don't know what Z represents. 380, that seems weird. Like, I know 360 is a circle. I don't know what 380 would be. So let's see. So one way you, you figure this out is by printing out what Z is. So the first Z starts at 63. And then it prints out Z times N. 63, 126. And N is just a counting number, it looks like. It just keeps count adding you know, one up. So, so it seems like it starts at 0, 63. It keeps adding 63 every time. All right. So what does Z do? It seems to me, and if we're doing legs, it, it it's 380 is almost like a circle. It feels like, and since we're doing this each time we draw a leg, this seems like where on the circle it draws the leg, like how far apart it is. And probably by degrees, I'm guessing. So each leg is 63 degrees apart, which is kind of weird. It's not a perfect circle. Maybe that's the point, because if they made it a perfect circle, it'd be too easy to figure out. So to me, it looks like it's an angle. Yeah, 0 to 360 is turtle faces. So you can kind of tell based off of it's doing this loop, but like, I mean, that's the problem. Like you name something Z, it doesn't explain what Z is. I had to do these print statements just to see values of Z. What's going on? So this is this print statement. These have been helpful ways to bug think debug programs. But yeah, so you got to do that kind of stuff. So okay, let's rename variable Z to a better name and test the program. So what do I call Z? Um, the leg, it's kind of like the distance between legs. So I'm going to go leg dis, I'm going to go leg distance or something like that. That sounds good to me. I'm going to rename all these. That'd be good. Okay. Leg distance. That's how I would do it. Or go leg dist maybe works. The last variable you need to rename n is the incrementing counter. This means it adds one to itself at each iteration of the while loop. It is initiated at zero and the first iteration of the while loop increments to one, blah, blah, blah. We just designate value. So a tracing table may help you understand. So we do earlier in the lesson, we did these tracing tables on like keeping track of variables. That's sometimes hard when you're trying to debug programs. Now, if you're using a different like development environment, not this trinket, sometimes there's things that let you step through a program one step at a time, and then you can watch what the variables are. But we don't have that right here. So 
oops, the way they're kind of simulating this is with these tables. Like, oh, what is each variable along the way? Okay, but the thing to understand, n is just your counting number. It just increments every time. And back in your drawing program, predict the value of n each time your algorithm loops. So it should just always add up by 1 every time. So n will just start at 0, and we've done this with while loops. We have an n equals n plus 1. It keeps adding 1 every time. That's all it does. All right? Um, nothing else besides that. So, do you really need to rename n? What does this say? Be predict the value of n. So, here's the thing, folks. For a counting variable, I don't believe that needs to be renamed. I think I think for these, if if you have just a counting var variable n is fine. Sometimes you see as i for iterate. If you want to say count and name it a count, fine. But a convention, a lot of times, if it's just like a thing that's helping you loop in a program like this, naming it a letter like that, that's fine. I think you'd be fine. I'd say it's probably better because it's easier to follow. Now, if you have to loop a certain number of times, we're going to learn about four loops later future in a future lesson instead of using a while loop you'll use a for loop and this will look a little cleaner so but we're not doing that yet there's actually a cleaner way of doing this so yeah uh step 20 here if you're doing the lesson i asked you to do all the variables should now be properly named you should have a better understanding so you knew, write the five lines of the while loop so explain what the iteration your program does okay so here's what I want you to do at home. You copy this in the while loop or just copy all the code. I don't care. And then you paste in the lesson and in that document and just explain what it does. I just want you to, like, if you did all this work, just copy and paste it. Explain what it did. Back to your drawing program. Oh, that's 20. Save each. So one thing to note here. If you are really doing this, it's especially if you're doing this over multiple days, save your work. Like make backups in case you accidentally delete it or you change too much. We'll talk about version software later and how to keep revisions. Like if you make major changes, you might go, oh, that was a bad idea. But you want to have like you spent a whole day on it. You're like, yeah, bad call. You want to go back to what you did. All right, save the version of the code. So save this somewhere. Copy, paste in the second doc. You might need this for part two of the lesson. That's it, folks. Oh, wait. I go through step 24. Do I go through 24 in the lesson? Line, do I do that? I think that's, I think it was just 21. Oh, I don't remember what I told the class. I hope it was 21. 21 for sure. Lesson says 21. Thank you. That makes way more sense. We're done. See ya for the next section.